All right, Gohan, because I know you brought them up beforehand. Uh, yeah, let's talk to Go- Gohan in Texas. Gohan, you're live with going? Eric and V. How's it hey, going, y'all? Doing well. You know what I heard uh, since we last talked? That's it. I heard that people called you a troll on other shows, but you've always been really nice to us. What the hell? Uh, I, I don't mind. Uh, I think troll <laughs> is kind of a, it's a, it's a word that gets used a lot. Sometimes it's a compliment. Sometimes it's uh, accurate. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. Well, I, I appreciate that the time that you've called in has been used to really reflect on, talk about things honestly, and not waste the time of us and our audience. So we appreciate that. Um, it says in the notes, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to read it. It says, you have evidence for Christianity. Um, lay it on. What do you got? Yeah. So um, m- most of the reason why I call really isn't to like convince anybody else. It's really to see if I can kind of become unconvinced. Cool. Uh, I, I understand that's kind of a misplacing of the burden of proof, but um, but th- that's kind of where I'm coming from. You know, um, honestly, it makes sense in that if we were convinced, we would share why we're convinced. And if we're not convinced, we can share with you why we're not convinced. Yeah, we're good. But, yeah. Um, and before I kind of get into it, uh, one thing I wanted to discuss was the, um, idea of evidence. Um, okay. w- would it be safe to assume that we all agree that evidence can sometimes lead to an uh, incorrect conclusion? Absolutely. Um, it, okay. evidence it, on its own. So to clarify, when we're talking about evaluating evidence and and what likely caused a thing, the best we can do is make our best guess about what happened. We can't say for sure anything like that. That's just not how that works. But we are comfortable with saying, hey, you know, 99% certainty that um, uh, the sun rose this morning and every morning prior, so I'm going to make the prediction that the sun's going to rise tomorrow morning as well. Right, like right. you can't you can't prove it, but I've got some pretty damn good evidence. Right. Okay. So uh, that that's kind of where I was coming from. Sure. Um, because I, I feel um, as though I do have very convincing evidence, and it has convinced me and many others. Oh, uh, okay. But I understand at the same time that doesn't mean it's proof. Sure. Um, and I would hope that even if you guys see there is evidence for God, that doesn't mean you agree there's a God, but you see there is evidence. You just don't think it's convincing. Right. Yeah. There's, there is a, there is no evidence. Right. There is a very bad habit where atheists will say there is no evidence for God. And what they mean is there is no good evidence for God in my estimation, but that doesn't mean that I could say God is real. Therefore, because of what's in my coffee mug right now, that's bad evidence, but that is technically under the category of what I consider to be evidence. <laughs> yeah, it's it just as it's okay. presented. So yeah, all right. I, so I, we're I, good I, moving forward. I love that we set this groundwork because okay. I yeah. we totally would have got stuck on that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Cool. Um, so I usually categorize my evidence into a uh, acronym that uh, spells out shape. Um, okay. S. The S stands for science. The H stands for history. The A is uh, probably not the best letter, but I chose it because it makes an acronym. Uh uh, (laughs) Arguments for um, the basis of logic, reason, and morality. And then the T E. Yeah, that that was a kind of catch all. It's not really fair, (laughs) but I needed an acronym. All right. (laughs) What's P? uh, P E is personal experience. or and physical exercise, one, depending on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, last time I called in, um, we I don't exactly remember what we were discussing, but I know we left off on the uh, idea for me to call back with arguments for fine-tuning, and uh, I would categorize that under the S for shape, uh, oh, coming oh, for from science. science. Okay. Oh, d- did you watch last week's episode when we talked about fine-tuning? Uh, I watched a clip this morning about you guys with fine tuning. I don't know when that clip was, though. So. Yeah, it might be from this last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, so, let's let's dive into it. Let's talk about fine tuning. 
Um, so, so do, um, do you want to give us just a brief so, version of the fine tuning argument that way people who haven't heard it or haven't interacted with it this way can follow along? Sure. Um, the fine tuning argument kind of goes like either the universe or life itself is uh, so uh, finely tuned that if things were changed or kind of um, different in any way, either life as life wouldn't exist or the universe wouldn't exist. And uh, therefore, it's unlikely that it was an accident and more likely that it was there by either some type of force or person. Okay. I, I'm, I'm willing to work with that. All right. Um, <laughs> so you believe that our universe was finely tuned for life. Is that right? Uh, yes. Do you think that the universe could be better tuned for life, or do you think we're optimal right now? Um, that, that's hard to answer. Um, the, the only thing I can say is um, how unlikely it is for life to form. Um, well, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely willing to go down that route, but I feel like that's going down one that's just off to the side just a little bit. I, I want you to finish, but I'm, I, I may wind up kind of corralling it back to that before we move on. Okay. So yeah, I, I'd say there's couples, a, a couple of examples of fine tuning. I would say um, abiogenesis and evolution are my strongest examples of fine tuning. That's kind of why I was going down that route. Ah, um, got it. Okay. okay. Did you want to go down another route? Well, I just kind of want to put a pin in it. If you say, "Look, this isn't my okay. this isn't my strong suit." I totally understand. I appreciate the honesty. Um, my first reaction when somebody says that the universe was fine tuned is for me to point out that the vast majority of the universe is deadly, <laughs> and because right. of that, um, if it could be fine tuned, it could be done a hell of a lot better than it is now, which w kind of serves as as evidence against the claim that it was specifically made for life or our life. Do you think um, it could be though? I mean, uh, it, because. Well, all, all evidence I've seen shows that there's no other possible way that life could have formed. Any sure. other way would have been not possible at all. And this was the so far only possible way for life to have formed. So, so I, 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 oh my gosh. Okay. I'm excited <laughs> about this. So, um, in, or, in order for me to interact with this, there are a couple of things that I'm okay. granting that are kind of being thrown in in order for me to engage with you. So for me to respond to this, I need to set aside my skepticism and go, okay, for the sake of this argument, we imagine that there is a God who is capable of creating universes and is capable of fine tuning them. And then we can move forward and go, you say, hey, Eric, could you imagine, could it possibly be done better? Well, if I thought that there was a God that was all powerful, then yeah, absolutely. I could imagine a God well, creating a universe that is entirely habitable and where everywhere th that it would be hospitable and, and, and people would thrive. Why not? I mean, all powerful um, is a, a huge. Can I give a quick response? Yeah. Uh, so for what I'm saying so far, um, God isn't needed in the assumption that life is hard to form. That, that's just a scientific fact that life is hard to form. So, so far, that, that's kind of where I'm starting from. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's ignore God for a second. Just if we could agree that life either to form or to evolve is not only improbable, just extremely highly improbable. Well, kind of no, because of what you said okay. just a minute ago, right? You said okay. we don't have there is no other way that we have seen things could go. We have no evidence that the universe could not be finely tuned because we see this universe and it is like this, therefore it is finely tuned. And that kind of transfers over to this, right? Life is is not technically very improbable because it happened. And this is the only universe we have ever experience therefore the probability of life happening is a hundred percent yeah g given given the given what we have and given the resources necessary right life may be inevitable right so and this is where i want to just highlight something really quickly which is 
the instinct to categorize and compare things is something that is just built into our brains. It's how our brains function. Mm -hmm. And so it makes a lot of sense to look at something that seems very improbable or very difficult, like a biogenesis, and then try and compare that to other options, right? Like it seems like common sense to do. But when we get down to it and actually talk about the statistic probability of a thing happening, if there are no other ways that it has gone, and that is the only thing that happened, then it just happened, right? We can't then extrapolate into, well, it didn't happen in other situations because those other situations, to our best knowledge, don't exist. And, and the fossil record actually bears that out. Um, I, I feel like I can go on from there, but I want to give you the opportunity to respond to V first. Yeah, um, thanks. Um, <laughs> it, it's um, If I could try and make an analogy, I would say uh, the life, I think I might have made it a similar analogy before. Um, like life forming is a one chance, uh, one time thing that has happened. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they're kind of trying to compare that statistically against others. So like if I drop a ball randomly onto a ground from the top of a hill, uh, you could say, well, it was it had a hundred percent chance to land where it landed. And my response would be, well, that's not true. I could have dropped it wherever. I just didn't. It was just dropped there. So, yes, it did drop there. That's 100% true. But it could have gone any other way. That's the thing, though. That's we we that. have a lot of experience watching people drop things and having them land different places. But if all we see is a ball on the ground with no understanding of how it got there or who might have dropped it or if dropping it was even something that happened then we can't make those extrapolations. And that's kind of where the analogy breaks down. What if we didn't have any other examples of anybody dropping it? What if we only had my one example? Would you still say that's a 100% chance of me dropping it where I did? Uh, I, After the fact, yes. And I, 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 if, if we don't have any... Okay, if, I, I disagree, but I think we're disagreeing more on like a, like a um, principle. how we uh, define terms. Okay, well, we can continue on if we would like. I just wanted to make okay. that point. Hmm. Go for it. I, I'm just kind of, I'm thinking about it, and and really, my understanding of um, how life developed on this planet is rudimentary at best. Um, but when I look at the way that it's talked about and the way that it's described in the fossil record, the vast majority of time that life, in quotes, um, has been on this planet has been as you know single celled <laughs> organisms as as these tiny, tiny little things. And I, I think that our brains are just not capable of really understanding what geologic time is. And when we think about how many millions and millions and millions of years went, then those are failures, uncountable failures, until finally, at some point, there may have been you know, a reproduction. And then from reproduction, do you think it went perfectly? No, we still have millions and millions of years. Like nothing, it, 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 the idea that nothing was happening during that time, I think, discards what we can be looking at as evidence of failure and failure and failure and failure and failure and then eventually success. And, and failure and success are kind of weird words, but just, you know, not lack of adaptation, lack of adaptation, lack of adaptation. And then eventually somewhere along the line, adaptation took hold. Um, Which is where I'm, I'm confused about the fine-tuning piece. Yeah. Um, because I, I'm very curious to hear a theist explanation of the fine-tuning argument that includes evolution, because that is something that I think is very useful. But understanding evolution, necessarily, you would have to admit that it is a messy, deadly process most of the time. So where does fine-tuning fit into it? Uh, sure. So um, really quick, it kind of sounds like we're going to move away from abiogenesis, and I'm okay with that. And I know, uh, Eric, you were saying that you kind of have a rudimentary understanding of abiogenesis. I think if anybody says they have an understanding of it, it's probably lying. Uh, the, be the best idea we have is that it came from um, like a revolving cycle of heating and cooling with uh, lava, mud, and the correct um, 
environment well, molecules and yeah. and also so panspermia like, and, and 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 to, and to clear up this up for the for the viewer um right gohan could say god had absolutely nothing to do with evolution it just has to do with abiogenesis and abiogenesis simply means the beginning of life so once you have yeah. life abiogenesis is over then you're talking about right. evolution um so go right. on if if you don't think a god had anything to do with evolution then yeah we can just focus on ab abiogenesis um do you and, uh, do you i th do think he had a huge hand in evolution oh um, so but it, i just want to recap on abiogenesis it, i i feel very comfortable in saying that we don't have a very good idea yet and i think any biologist that says this is the way mm -hmm. is probably not being honest but the most likely way we know of is kind of the idea i described that's what i think is true but almost every biologist is going to say that's probably not very likely even though it's the most likely one wait, um how do that, you... that's what i think is true though so wait so my sorry um how did you determine that it was the most likely one if you also think that most people who study this would not agree with you? Well, no, they agree that it is the most likely one. It's just not likely. Oh, like, got it, it, got it, got it. Okay. Probably, it's uh, unlikely, but that's the best we got. Got it. I, I, I feel like that is probably where I would stop. And then I would say any conclusions drawn from that, I'm going to be hesitant of. So if you were to draw okay. a conclusion, I yeah, I, I think if you were to, to look at that, what was just stated and go, see, God, I think that's jumping the gun like way early because we're, we're at a point where just more investigation needs to be done. Right. I'm curious how no, God I fits think, into this whole conversation, because so far we've come, come up to the point where I think we all pretty much agree, which is, hey. Yeah we're studying this there are some theories there are some ways that we think it could have happened nobody knows 100 percent for sure it seems like it was probably unlikely to have happened therefore what like where does god fit in well for me it's not again it's, it is unlikely but i do think that is a way and if that is the way that abiogenesis occurred for me the if that's the way, that's evidence that there was a guiding force, whether it's a mind or some type of other force, because it's, as everybody admits, it's extremely improbable. So if that is the way, I, I don't have enough faith to believe it didn't happen by pure chance. Okay, so you're, you're, you're just running a mathematical equation and picking the answer that feels the most comfortable. And, and I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. It feels to me like you're saying... I have two options here. I could either accept that this happened and it was unlikely, or I could accept that it happened, but it was more likely because it was guided by some kind of mind or force that wanted it to happen. So I'm going to pick that one. Uh, I think you said that perfectly. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So, so, so maybe Gohan is talking about panspermia. Uh, I can't tell you what that is. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, so that could be as easily explained as an alien coming down and dropping. And we're back to aliens. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the idea that life um, found its way here is the kind of panspermia the the the, the seeds of life were planted here. Um, there's definitely no need I for. To, uh, there's. I used to think that was Richard Dawkins' idea. But I found out recently it's not. But no, I, I don't subscribe to that idea. Why? That's kind of more likely than the one that you're rooting for. Well, we don't know quite I, I, what he's rooting is, for yet. But all it does is it just pushes the buck back one. Uh, and uh, then you have to ask how that life forms. So it, it uh, could be. It's just it doesn't give you any answers. Well, but then again, that's exactly the same as saying that a disembodied mind or something you know powerful created it that pushes the back the buck back in the same way. I, w w the, like I'm not I, I, I'm not advocating panspermia. What I'm trying to do is give you analogous situations to point out where the flaw is, and if you can find the flaw in the in the in the analogous situation, then hopefully you can find the flaw in your own. Sure, I, I think that's helpful. Um, this is probably the last thing, and then we'll move on to evolution. But uh, 
the difference between those two is, in my argument, God would be a uncaused um, thing that causes creation, and the transpermia, I don't know if I said that correctly. Panspermia. The panspermia. The New life merch. that was created would not be uncaused. It would still have to be caused. Why? If God was uncaused, that other life would be uh, caused somehow. So why, though? So that just brought back. Are you asking why that life would have to be caused? Yeah. Because it wasn't there in the beginning. How do you know? What if they were eternal aliens? What if they were there from the beginning? Uh, uh, I think we have good evidence that shows that the time had a beginning and the universe had a beginning. Why are you assuming the aliens are bound by space-time? They could have come from another universe. I have no evidence of another universe. So how are you making these, these statistical probabilities in your head? Uh, no evidence of another universe is zero. We also have no evidence of mindless, uh, of disembodied minds. And we're, the thing is, we agree that when there's not evidence for it, you should discard it because there's no reason to believe something without evidence. And so we're giving you examples and you're agreeing with us. We're just wondering why you're not agreeing that um, <laughs> this God concept fits the exact same thing. Yeah, I have a difficulty understanding why you guys aren't agreeing with me either. <laughs> uh, well, here's the deal, Gohan. At this point, this is where a lot of these arguments start getting circular. And if you can avoid that, then you are miles ahead of some of the biggest apologists out there right now. So right now, it comes down to, is there evidence? Because we've agreed that that is necessary, whether or not it's good, for a disembodied mind outside of space-time that was here since the beginning, existing. And if we agreed that that was the case, that there was evidence, then we would be able to move forward. But if it's, an, if it's a premise in your argument, then we have a problem because you can't say there was a disembodied mind that created things, therefore there's a disembodied mind because it created things. Do you see how that goes in a circle? I do, but that, that's not where the argument is starting. The argument is starting with the improbability of life forming on its own. What is and the probability? Then... Right, right, right. But what is the probability of a disembodied mind outside of space time? Um, I, I couldn't tell you. We couldn't either. But, yeah. Uh, no, exactly. We can't. We can't know because we don't know what that is, or if it could exist, or what it would look like if it did or didn't. It's but, an unfalsifiable statement. Well, it's not unfalsifiable. If you have a any evidence that shows space time is eternal, then that would falsify any argument that says um, a god created it. No, actually. How? It, if it's eternal, how was it created? Sure. So, um, I, 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 I got what you're saying. Um, but I guess in my mind, what I'm thinking is, let's say you proved that the universe was eternal. I, th I can imagine lots of Christians saying, yeah, God's eternal too. Duh. Um, so um, People have posited that maybe the universe just always has been. And the next thing out of the other person's mouth is, well, that's the, the Grim Reaper fallacy. That's, that's, that's infinite regress. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. So... You, I know that you said we could say that technically and it would disprove it, but it wouldn't actually. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, I've, I've also talked to people who've said in Genesis 1, God's, uh, uh, in the beginning, God stood upon the surface of the water. Um, and, and, and like the, the way that that's described, I can absolutely imagine Christians incorporating that in and it not falsifying a damn thing. Maybe, you, yeah. know, you, you know what the problem is, Gohan? We're jaded. Okay. We're jaded. We're jaded. We're jaded. We're jaded. Uh, I feel like that's, uh, yeah. I'm 29, but I feel like that's too hip of the lingo for me. Can you explain <laughs> what that means? Oh no, I, I'm I'm old. Fuck. God damn it. Um, that was we, a very polite way to say that's something I don't know yet, old man. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, go on. Yeah, I'm 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 30. I'm gonna turn 35 soon. Anyway, you are. Um, um, go on. Uh, what I'm saying is we're disillusioned. We've interacted with enough people to know that what might falsify things for you has not 
historically falsifying things for others and because of that it feels like a exercise in futility sometimes and so yeah, i think you guys uh i think uh even like c.s lewis was farther down the path than you guys are so uh no nobody's too far down either path to change their mind oh don't oh. <laughs> oh no oh you started with c.s lewis i'm gonna give it to be <laughs> gohan uh, you, this no. you did this to yourself no um i'm actually uh, gonna advocate that hey we we've we are seven minutes away from time. <gasps> Holy okay. crap, we've had like two calls. Evolution or no? Um, we we, we have on. to get some other callers. We really would like gotcha. to. And I think that that is going to be where most of the meat of this conversation is. I just don't think we're going to have time today, but please call back. Uh, I'll call back another uh, week. Um, I'll just say I do see evolution being true and as more evidence for God. And maybe I'll continue with that next call. And Please do. That's why I'm disillusioned. <laughs> Take care, <laughs> go on. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, that is the structure of the conversation that I want to see had more, right? The, the way that it's interacted with back and forth where both sides take points, take turns going, hey, you know what? Here's where I'm comfortable. Here's where I'm knowledgeable. Here's where I'm not knowledgeable. Yeah. And finding where we can productively move forward or at least clearly identify where our splits are. Yeah. I like that. 